So just an overview because there's not a single topic. We both work on big Grafana plugin to just make general improvements. Uh, Kartik worked on the operator auto recovery feature and I added replica sets and deployment metadata to uh, the metadata that Vizier can display. So what is the Grafana Pixie plugin? This plugin allows Pixie to act as a data source to send data to Grafana and visualize that data on Grafana's UI. And Grafana is one of the most used dashboarding services on the market and having Pixie as a data source for that would generally improve Pixie's uh, use in that field. And the existing plugin functionality provides a single cluster ID and an API key to query data from, from a single cluster on Pixie and users would have to input pixel scripts to visualize that data collected by Pixie. Right. So this is kind of how the old panel looks like. And as you can see that there's, uh, there's an editor where users type in whatever pixel script they have and the resulting data would pop up in that panel right there and this one appears to be a time series. Yeah. So some of the problems from that design were that there were no predefined scripts. User, users would have to manually type out pixel scripts for whatever kind of data they wanted to visualize. And another issue was that there was no column selection or group by feature that Pixie has, but users that use Grafana wouldn't have those features in their UI. Yeah, also, as you saw here, there's no code highlighting. So if the script is more than like five or 10 lines, you'll get lost and no lines, so if there is an error, you can't actually find where it is. Um, also, no dashboard variables, so for example, I'll show it later, but if you have a dashboard which, for example, displays the pod information, and you have five different panels, you can't actually change the pod very easily because you have to go in and script, perhaps, and it doesn't update the whole dashboard. Uh, so that's something we added as well. Uh, also, there was a need of predefined dashboards like Pix like all the general Pixie scripts, like cluster script, pod script, and everything like that. Uh, users usually don't want to predefine those manually because that's a very general use case, so we want to supply that to them. And also, as a demo for our uh, Grafana plugin, uh, there, we made a... Um, uh, Kubernetes de deployment. So basically you can, with a few commands, you can deploy a managed Grafana instance and see the plugin in action right away. Um, so I believe we are moving back, to the, moving to the demo. So I, okay. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's nice. So this is how like the new panel looks like. As you can see, it, the aesthetic looks a lot better than the previous one. And there's multiple options I can show you. So users can choose from pre-written scripts. In this case, we have a bunch of different scripts already pre-written for a user to just select from. And depending on the script that they choose, the relevant columns would be displayed and users can toggle what columns they want to actually see. And depending on the script, if it's a tabular one, they can group by certain columns. So in this case, they can group by timestamp and the visualization would change appropriately. And they can also aggregate it. So they can choose a column that they want to aggregate by. In this case, you can do that and you can choose a function as well. And it, well, I guess it takes a while. So now you have your relevant data that's being popped up and you can add uh, more columns and functions to group by as well. The entire idea is that users would have an opportunity to modify the data they're visualizing without actually touching the pixel script and just playing around with the different selects that the user has in front of them. And using this new functionality, uh, we also pre-made a bunch of different dashboards and I'll just demo a service dashboard. So this is my demo cluster was the Pixie Sock Shop front-end pod, uh, front-end uh, service. 
this dashboard pretty much just replicates what we have in PixUI, but using Grafana. And all of these panels need to be defined with a separate script. Uh, and you can like change what service you want. It automatically pulls the data from our viziers. And so you don't actually need to go in and find the names. Uh, so for example, here you can uh, I don't know, let's do Calvin service. And it just updates the whole dashboard. It takes a while, uh, but... Well, it seems like there's no information at all about Calvin, but as you see, pod updated. Maybe there's some inbound uh, traffic. There's a lot of slow requests. And as another example is a pod uh, dashboard, which has information about the pod. You can do the same thing here as like what pod you want. Since it's slow, I won't do that. It has container list, everything basically that we have on the UI, it has it here. Um, uh, so as you can imagine, this would drive the uh, usage of our plugin in Grafana by a lot because instead of just having a simple text editor, which is not really even an editor. There's no code highlighting, no nothing. So people probably wouldn't be able to use it much with much comfort, but now it's way easier. It just as a uh, concept, I did myself and it was quite enjoyable, which is a good sign that we did a pretty good job with this. Um, and then we'll move, now we'll move on to some of the work we did after we finished with our Grafana improvements. So the next thing I worked on was having auto operator auto recover in failure states. So if I ask, what does the Vizier operator do? So the Vizier operator deploys Vizier into your cluster, it manages Vizier, it monitors the state of Vizier, and it can also restart different pods based on their failed dependencies. So this is kind of a diagram which shows how the Vizier operator interacts with different parts inside of the cluster. So once a Pixie user deploys Pixie into their cluster, you have your Vizier operator and Vizier. And the Vizier operator monitors Vizier and its different other components, such as NATs, metadata, PEMS, cloud connection, the control plane. And it periodically tries to figure out what the state is of the different components within Vizier. So some common Vizier states that result in unhealthy clusters, which I addressed in helping auto recover, were the NATS pod failure and a persistent volume PV failing to mount. So the current way of fixing this, these two issues were to basically delete your cluster and redeploy. And that seemed pretty tedious. And instead, the operator could go in and do that work for you. So the way to auto repair a NATS pod failure would just to have the operator monitor when the NATS pod fails and simply delete it. And the way to repair a persistent volume failure to mount would just to make sure, just for the operator to monitor when the PV claim fails and then switch to an etcd backed metadata store instead. So this diagram kind of shows how this new functionality plays in with the entire, all of these other systems. So the main difference is that when the Vizier operator receives a status from Vizier, if that status is like a failed state, that failed state would go and trigger this functionality where this, this function would try to see whether or not this failed state is something that it can repair. If it can repair it, it'll repair it and it'll update the status and send it back to the operator. And hopefully the cluster would stay alive. All right. Um, and I worked on some metadata service updates. So the motivation is that the deployments and replica sets are some of the most common resources that people usually use in their uh, Kubernetes deployments. And since we don't support, support it yet, before I added them to, uh, to our code, uh, users weren't able to like see the state of their deployment, for example, and they didn't have dashboards to see that. Um, so I'll just give a quick like overview of how the metadata service works because I don't think like not everybody here knows how it works. So it's just kind of an educational thing. Uh, so Kubernetes API can generate different events, like for example, a pod update or maybe deployment update. Uh, and 
our service can subscribe to the, those updates and get them whenever something uh, changes. Uh, then the service processes the update from Kubernetes and then sends the update to storage so we can have uh, some fault tolerance if PAMs and Calvins fail, we can just pull in the updates from the storage and have long-term uh, metadata update savings. And also the metadata service sends it to PAMs and Calvins so they can uh, so they can query the updates and display them when you run the pixel scripts. Um, in the PAM and Calvins, the updates are store, stored in the internal state. Um, and how we expose it to the users is through the UDFs API. Basically, you can say, give me replica sets, give me deployments, and the PAM will query, PAM or Calvin will query the state and will basically just display like the name of replica sets or replica set ID or deployment. And it's pretty much how it works. Just a pipeline uh, and exposure through the uh, UDF API. Anyways, if you're interested of how the update might look like, it might have like a name, ID, start, stop time, the replicas in the, repl in the replica set update, maybe some conditions that they might have, and then you can query that from the UI. And here's an example of UDF. <clears throat> For example, you can query replica set from the context or get the status of replica sets using a, a specific function. Okay, and I also made a few dashboards to actually see if that works. So the first one would be dashboard with replica sets. So you can see that you can query like the usual, how many uh, pods are ready in the replica sets, the names of the replica sets. You can see perhaps which replica sets are performing the slowest in your cluster. For example, here the front end is being the slowest one. Uh, for example, you may wonder why this specific replica sets use, uses over a terabyte of resident set size. Um, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and there's also a dashboard for specific replica sets. Uh, I just decided to look into the front end replica set because that seemed quite interesting, maybe why it's, a, uh, it's uh, so peculiar. Uh, and then there's a dashboard for deployments, which basically very similar. Uh, you can see the like how many pods are ready, up to date available, and then you can see the names, you can see the whole deployment uh, throughput, the error rates, and so on. So basically this will allow you to uh, have a status of your deployments as well as maybe pods and services as we had before. Um, so That's it, uh, was the demo and was our presentation. Thank you so much for listening. <laughs>